I got a project I need to work on. I've been laying off to do it, and it's been one thing or the other, and I don't know uh, how far I'm going to get today, but uh, I'm going to make a good faith effort to uh, work on this old uh, John Deere hay elevator. And uh, it ought to be a simple thing just to slide this section onto this one, but it's not. And uh, that's because this middle section right here, there's three sections. They're like eight foot each, one, two, three. This section right here uh, is bent. And I've already uh, tried to straighten it out to some extent, and I'll show you uh, the tool I used for that here in just a little bit. But uh, before I can do anything, I need this end of the uh, ele elevator to go in that direction so I can get it up on these, uh, uh, these things right here. So what I got to do is I need to get some uh, penetrating oil and some wrenches and uh, uh, loosen all this up to get some slack in this chain. Uh, I think if I can just get some slack in the chain where it'll bottom out right here instead of over here, uh, I'll have enough that I can, you know, pull it back. Uh, but we'll see. So this piece right here, this whole piece was not just bent in kind of like that. It was also bent kind of inward like that. It looks like what it looks like to me happened is somebody drove a front wheel of a tractor up against it and just pushed that over like that. And so, you know, this joint right here just kind of went like that. And the same thing uh, down here to some extent. So it was bent way in, you know, and uh, to bend it out, you know, I, I tried to I thought I would uh, pound on it, and I thought I'd do this, that, and the other. And in the end, what I did is I went to Harbor Freight, and I bought a 36-inch uh, uh, pipe wrench. And uh, I didn't pay but like 40 some dollars for it, I don't think. It's aluminum, so it's not that heavy. And, uh, and I wrapped that thing right around here. And I gave it the big heave ho, and uh, that went a long ways towards straightening it out. And so, uh, what I'm ready to do though is I want to get as many of these connections in place as I can. And uh, before I do that, I got to take that chain loose. But uh, let me speak about these connections. So, when I put these things in, uh, what I'm going to do is these are going to be different lengths and that the reason is uh, so that I can uh, you know I can get one of them up on it and then come in a little further and get another one on it and then come in a little further and get another one and another one and uh, kind of do it like that I don't have four of these uh, this thing was already separated when I got the uh, when I, uh, you know, got the elevator. And uh, so I need uh, two pieces of tube for this. And I looked and looked and uh, to try to see what I could find from, you know, PVC, uh, not PVC, but, uh, oh, uh, conduit, metal conduit, and uh, just solid steel rod. And I really couldn't find anything with the dimensions I need that I needed. So what I did is uh, I measured a piece of half inch pipe and I bought a nipple that it'll actually go up in there that's kind of uh, crinkled right there but I can tap it in and uh, they'll actually go up in there uh, just fine and uh, that was as good as I could get and uh, you know it's a hay elevator so it doesn't have to be uh, crazy uh, fancy so I'm hoping these things will work and what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna drill a hole in here and drop a Carter key through it in order to pin uh, these things in position so it's all gonna be in a bind when I finally try to 
pull it together and uh, I don't want these things sliding down this tube I want them going up into this tube and all the way around so uh, that's something I'll be trying to do as well there it is the PB blaster when I was a boy they wasn't PB blaster but they was liquid wrench and uh, the old stuff was really good I think they've changed their formulation uh, for environmental reasons but let me let that soak a little bit and then I'll give it a try so I don't know if you can see it or not but basically what I got to do is to let this uh, let this bolt go back and in doing so it'll let this uh, uh, sprocket right here move back and I have to do the same thing on this end and uh, so I've still got a fair amount of play and if worse comes to worse I'll just take that sprocket out but I'd prefer not to do that all right so I got these things I got this one loosened up down to here and uh, that's been kind of a wrestling match but I got it this one on this side They've got a carriage bolt with the sides mashed down instead of a hex, like right there. And it's actually just finger tight. So I'm going to, I think what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to buy a new set of bolts for this thing. Uh, the objective today is not to replace these bolts. It's to get these, you know, this section hooked on. To the rest of the elevator down there so but uh, I've almost got it I'm almost bottomed out in these slots and uh, so hopefully that'll give me enough room to pull this thing back such that you know I can make a clean uh, entry if you will that needs to be back right there so uh, let me keep going down here and I'll come back all right uh, I pulled this thing back and I still don't have enough uh, clearance so what I've done here now is uh, I pushed this thing forward like this and uh, I'll try to lift this chain off so that it sits over in here and see what that does for me. I got plenty of slack now. Uh, I'm hopeful that I don't have to take this chain apart, but it's not that big a deal. I just don't have the tool to do it with. Not with me today. All right, so I got the uh, I got the chain off of this sprocket, and uh, I'm hoping that'll give me enough uh, slack that I can uh, pull this thing back and have. As I said, space between this and this. And I'm trying not to break this chain, but uh, if push comes to shove, I will. So uh, I got uh, kind of pulled the slack out of that as I went back. And uh, hopefully uh, I can uh, line these things up and get them on. Uh, somehow some way and uh, let, let me ponder this a little bit and uh, I'll come back so when I when I move down here to this end of the elevator uh, once it goes together just to show you how it works uh, the way it's held together is with a couple of bolts on each side I guess you can ultimately draw them together and I've got some carriage bolts that I have uh, that I may try to put in there and pull them together to some extent uh, there's actually three holes uh, I'm just going to use two and uh, I'm going to have to go get uh, probably a grade five bolt instead of these these are probably pretty soft I mean they probably would be fine but uh, uh, They'll, they'll have to be fine for today because it's all I got. Now, uh, as I walk around this uh, elevator,
Uh, keep in mind that this side right over here was the one that was bent. I apologize for the sun and the shadows. Uh, so what I'm going to try to do is to get this side started first. And then I'll tap these shorter. So once I get these in and I know they'll go, then, uh, then I can start uh, probably try to get that one down there to go in. And then the last one on will be this one right here. And hopefully it'll go on. So I'm going to put these uh, pipe nipples in here. And uh, my other ones are in here somewhere. And I'm going to put a liberal amount of oil on them as well. So let me work at that and see if I can get this end to come together. And then I'll focus my attention on that end. All right, so uh, I'm not having much luck getting this thing to go together. And uh, what I've got up inside here, there's a lot of scale. I'm going to give it another try. And what I did is I bought some uh, uh, mechanical tubing that's a little bit smaller in diameter than this. And I'm hopeful that uh, maybe I can get that to go up in here. And if that don't work, I had thought about making a plate to go on the side, but I'm not so sure about that. Uh, ultimately, what might happen is, like I say, this is 24 foot. I may wind up coming down here and just cutting this thing. I hate to do that. I'd like to have the full length of this elevator, even if we're talking about probably uh, three foot here. I would like to have the whole length, but... Uh, Anyway, I'm going to tinker with this thing a little bit and uh, continue this video. So, I'll be back. Alright, so right here is the tubing I got. It kind of looks like conduit. Uh, but it's... I don't know, it's as thick a wall as that piece right there. It's pretty close, but it is a smaller diameter. And uh, it does fit up in here. And that's a major deal because... Uh, even these original inserts don't slide up into this because of slag and uh, uh, rust and slag and things like that that I can't get cleaned out. And if I can get this in there, I'll cut these. If I can get it in there, and then I'll, what I'll do is I'll drill a hole and uh, probably drop a cotter key in there. Uh, to, you know to hold it and uh, but ultimately what's going to hold this thing together is when these joints uh, come together you, you have a bolt you have a bolt here that you know pulls everything tight and if I can get it to come together that'll be like a major victory and then if I feel like I need a plate on the side I can do it, but at least I'll have something that'll hold it somewhat uh, centered, you know, from one section to the other. And uh, so I want to try this, and uh, I'm going to cut this piece right here, and I need to uh, get that thing out, and I really need to take all of these out too. I'm going to replace all four of them and uh, see what I can do. So I'll come back. I took my piece of steel, it's 36 inches long, and uh, I cut them nine inches, or give or take a quarter inch. And uh, because black magic markers are scarce as a dinosaur, I used electrical tape to kind of mark my spot. I'm buying a case of uh, black magic markers here, uh, probably off of Amazon soon. I ought to get about uh, 500 of them and then that way we know uh, we may not run out of them. And by that I mean we may not, uh, we may always be able to find a magic marker. Sometimes I struggle for some words around here. The other thing I did, I had my chain right here sitting over on this side and I put it on this side and then down here, that block of wood right there's uh, sole purpose is to trip me. Uh, I wanted to get the uh, chain off this sprocket to have plenty of uh, 
slack in the chain and I couldn't bring it over to this side so I had to bring all of the chain to this side now even with that I'm not sure that I have enough slack in the chain you know that if I put that halfway in <clears throat> that I can pull it back and and uh, get it to go up in there but I would like as much uh, lever if you will up in this uh, up in these tubes instead of something you know instead of something like that I think it's better if I've got a you know a pretty good uh, I got an insert that runs up in there uh, a, a, a fair way so what I'm gonna do now is uh, I'm gonna go ahead and drill my holes and I got some Carter keys and I'm gonna drill a hole through this and hopefully through this at the same time pull it out and drop a Carter key in do the same thing up here over here and over here and uh, I'll come back all right so I got the first one in there and uh, and then I got these Carter keys just drop that thing down and right now that's pinned in there I gotta knock this one out and then I'll I'll go around and do the rest of these but you can kind of see what I'm doing and uh, when I get it pulled together uh, I don't know that I'm going to need a Carter key on this side. I just want to make sure that when I start pushing this pushing this uh, thing together, that these, that this is unable to slide. That's what I'm after. So I got the old uh, inserts out. That nipple uh, was a little difficult to get out. And then one of these, this one right over here. I don't know if you can see that. I'm kind of standing in and then like that one was a little difficult to get out used a hammer and a PB blaster and believe it or not it they have to rotate or they're not going to come out and I used my big pipe wrench to get on it and turn it I figured you know bring out the big hammer now one thing that I got these inserts out I just need to make sure that the new ones will go in because what a disaster it would be if I got all this stuff drilled out and then found out that you know once I get them lined up they won't go in so that's what I'm doing right now and and then the other thing I'm going to do that's really important is each one of these is going to be a different distance uh, from here so uh, so I can get one of them in move it a little closer get another one in move it a little closer get the third one in move it a little closer and get the fourth one in so I'm not trying to get all of these into the into the holes all at one time so I want to be able to get them pushed in there one at a time and then whatever bending and prying I got to do to make the next hole line up this will already already be in there so uh, let me keep going I need to drill some more holes and I'll come back so I've got all these drilled and I've got the Carter key in I think this is uh, three and a half sticking out three inches stick sticking out two and a half inch sticking out and two I would have preferred it to been more than that but I mean, the original uh, piece that was in there was four inches long. So hopefully, you know, even two inches in here will suffice. Ultimately, uh, it'll get pulled together with bolts. And uh, I wanted this one to be the shortest because, as you can see, it's, it's bent pretty good right in here. I've still got some straightening out to do. So uh, let me attempt to slide some of this together. All right, so, so these two halves are in. These were the most vertical. The damage was really done on this side. And uh, so now I'm hitting right here. And uh, so what I gotta do is I need to pry this thing like that and see if I can get that to go in and get that to come out and then slide up on there. I'll come back. And this is, 
This is where the big Harbor Freight uh, pipe wrench comes in uh, because I'm going to try to, like I say, I'm, if I can just get it to move about a half inch, I can slide that. Well, let's see. I might ought to work on this one first, but uh, yeah, that's what I need to do. I need to get this one in first. So I'll uh, change my attention to uh, trying to get this one on there. But in other words, if I can get a third one on there and then a fourth one, I think, aside from it being uh, in, kind of in a bind, it may not want to slide up on here too good once it's in a bind, but we'll see. I think I can draw it up. If I can get them to go in, I think I can draw them up. And uh, I'm up here uh, by myself and uh, trying to make this thing go together every which way I can without uh, being in a back brace tomorrow. And somehow or another, I've gotten this uh, uh, pipe to go in all four, all four of these. And what I've done is I got some more tie straps. And uh, what I'm going to do, what I what I did is I put them on. I wanted to keep this from springing apart. And uh, so. And then I and then I tightened this one up, and this one right here I, I had pulled and bent like I showed you earlier, and I just a little bit off, and I took a hammer, and tapped it under. I had it pulled tight like this, where the lip of this was up against this, and I tapped it with a hammer, and it popped right in. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to pull this thing together, and uh, you'll see what I got. I'll come back. All right, what I had to do is uh, change my uh, straps around a little bit. This loop right here, you can see it, it's bumping up against this. Same thing over here. So I made them crisscross and I had to get a longer strap. Strap situation up here is no good. And uh, try to pull that in. A little bit of the time. And there it is. Now, I think when I raise up on it, it's going to close up like that. And the same thing over here. So, I've got some uh, bolts. I'm going to try to get, uh, see if I can find those things and put in there and see if I can cinch it down. But the bottom line is, I've got these this half on here. And uh, it may not be as rigid and tight obviously the diameter of that little insert i got in there is not quite as uh tight as these things were but uh that's what i had to do to get it together so let me uh let me get some uh bolts i've got some bolts around here somewhere and uh see if i can get them in there and tighten this thing down a little bit i'll come back here's where i stand on this elevator i've got the sections bolted together and when I come down to this joint, there's only two bolts, which is probably uh, more than sufficient. But I felt uh, since this one uh, was kind of compromised, I, I would go ahead and put three bolts in there. I put these bolts in with the thread sticking out this way because as the hay comes up, I don't want it like a, a, a loose string or something snagging on that on the end of that uh, those threads so uh, uh, I just kind of pointed them in that direction for that reason and then I gotta uh, bend these cotter keys uh, up and uh, and when I do I'll, I'll uh, try to tape them off so you won't so I won't uh, uh, you know gouge myself for the or the uh, the bale of hay as it goes by so I need to do that and then I need to uh, 
I got to get some fully threaded bolts to finish this thing off and then I can put the chain back on the track and uh, tighten it down and I'll put some grease on that zerk right there and then once I get done there I got to figure out if this motor runs uh, I'm not uh, particularly impressed with the way it's mounted and maybe I should be but you know when I see this rod all bent like that it causes me uh, some concern all right I'm back here uh, with my hay elevator and uh, I've been uh, in the hunt to find some suitable uh, bolts to secure this uh, sprocket right here so I can put the chain back on and originally what I had was uh, a hex head bolt. The problem is that threads don't come all the way down and I needed that. And I really didn't want uh, a carriage bolt with that shoulder on it like that. I would have preferred another, just a hex head bolt like this with threads all the way down. I could have ordered it from McMaster Car in the end, I felt I found a bolt like this. I forget what it's called, but it comes with a fastener on the end, and I'm just drawing a complete bank blank. The guy told me uh, what they were for, but I don't remember. But today, they're for a hay elevator, and they do have a square shoulder back here, uh, kind of a slot or Phillips head screw. Uh, so those things, I can get it to go in here. I go in like that. And then that shoulder can bottom out uh, dead solid against that bracket. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get this chain up on here. Put these uh, bolts in and see if I can uh, tighten it down and see what I got. So I got these bolts in there, and uh, I got a nut down here, and I got a nut up here. I don't know if that's the right way to do it, but uh, I can take it apart and reassemble all that crap. Uh, one thing about these chains is these things are finger pinchers all the way. So uh, as I wrestle with this, I've got my Carhartt gloves, and... Uh, try to keep my hands from getting boogered up handling that chain so let me uh, take a minute here see if I can get the chain on on here and then uh, I'll tighten it down all right uh, so that side's on and uh, you know trying to get these this chain on these sprockets uh, when this thing was pulled apart all right let me try this again my camera threw an error message so with this thing split apart uh there wasn't much in the way of slack to get this chain uh over the ends of the uh of that sprocket and uh, now that it's put together i have a lot more slack and and i just gotta kind of work my way down to the end here and one thing I'm a little concerned about is when you look at it, where it's kind of bowed right there, where it was bent in, this track is bent a little bit too. So uh, hopefully this thing will ride in that track okay. Uh, all this remains to be seen. Right in here is where it's bowed, right where this thing is kind of bowed out like that. You know, when we wa drop a washer on the ground up here, like I just did, I think to myself, a uh, hundred years from now, somebody will come in here with a metal detector, and uh, they'll think they, they'll think that's like a, a silver coin, and they'll be so disappointed by that time it'll just be a rusty washer. Well, I really don't want to break this chain loose, 
but this is how close I am to this thing coming over here. But, uh, nothing I have done has uh, enabled me to move that chain like a sixteenth of an inch to get it over top of this. But it just seems kind of odd that the chain wouldn't be long enough out of the gate to fit over this. But maybe that's not what they want when they build these things. I don't know. I've got with me a big hammer. I got a ball peen hammer, but I can't find it. I got my gloves, and I got a chain breaker. Uh, and what I hope is not a futile attempt to uh, get this chain broken so I can fit it around this thing. So let me get things set up and I'll come back. All right, I got this chain up in here. And I suppose I can hold it like that. And then I can strike it with a hammer. I don't know if you can see that or not. The sun's so bright. I can strike it with a hammer and uh, hopefully knock it out. So let me give it a try. I'll come back. Alright, so I'm going to clear my tools here a little bit and uh, that chain now uh, needs to, that chain now needs to come up over this sprocket like that and then I need to put it back together. So b before I get ahead of myself, I definitely want to make sure that this chain is on that sprocket right here. And then I want to get it up on this track. And by getting it in this, getting it lined up like this, it really gives me the most slack. Sure, why that thing's. Uh, might have to hammer on that one a little bit. That's probably where I tried to hit on it the other day. But I'm gonna at least get it up on this track before I attempt to do anything else. And, uh, so let me come back. All right, so I got this to lay down. I got these things centered over that piece of wood. And uh, and then I got it wrapped around both sprockets, which may or may be what I should or shouldn't do, but that's what I got. And then I need to put it back together right here. So uh, let me try to see if I can do that. Hold on. All right, so I got the chain up here, and I got this thing on. It's actually pretty tight, and uh, one of my boys is here, and he's going to try to tap this thing without hitting my hand. So go ahead and give it a tap. Things are falling to pieces, but we'll get it. We'll get it by hook or crook. There, that's it. All right, we cut it off prematurely, but anyway, uh, so this chain is on, and uh, let me see the camera here. And uh, so when I come down here, I think
think it's going to hang on the sprocket uh, up there, but assuming that I turn this thing, that chain ought to turn one way or the other for the first time ever. So this is great news. And uh, what I'm going to do now is I've got my bolts uh, to pull this thing back. And I need to do that. So let me let me do that and I'll come back. As I may have mentioned in the earlier video clips, uh, the screws, the bolts that were used to hold this sprocket in place were fully threaded. And uh, one of them was a hex head and it, it bolted flush right up to that. The other one was a uh, it was a carriage bolt and that square shoulder didn't fit too well uh, right here and uh, this is not the bolts that came out of them and I was going to order some bolts from McMaster Car but I found some bolts at a hardware store that uh, while they're not a hex head they've got a nice uh, slot for a screwdriver or a big Phillips and uh, but nonetheless it'll give me that uh, flat surface I want up against this thing and I'm going to screw this thing together but uh, I may come back and uh, re-wicker it a little bit but uh, for today I, I want to get this sprocket off of here and pull it back pull that chain tight and uh, just see how it rolls on this conveyor so let me let me put these things on and I'll come back. All right, so I got these bolts screwed in here, uh, pushed in here, and I got one back here to kind of lock it on the back, and then I got one here to kind of tighten everything up. I don't know if you can see that or not. To kind of tighten everything up. And then I got one here to kind of lock it down. This is a grade five uh, uh, nut right here. Uh, I had to go through my collection to find it. Uh, or I'd have bought uh, three of these for each side. So I got this arrangement on both sides. And it's as I wanted, this is flat up against it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten this thing up. And again, uh, this is probably not going to be permanent. I'll probably come back in here and put some washers on it. And uh, But I just want to get this sprocket off of this thing. And I want to tighten up this chain a little bit. And just kind of spin it and what I'm curious about uh, in a lot of ways is how it's going to track over these wooden pieces right here you know with this bend with this bend in this thing that we straightened out you know is that going to throw this off and uh, so let me uh, let me try to tighten this thing up and uh, see what I got I got the chain tightened down a little bit and what I'm doing is putting a, a tape measure here and looking uh, how close I am to this bar coming across. That's about two and three quarters and then right here is about two and three quarters. Uh, might be a little bit of difference. Uh, one of my concerns is is that this thing run so that the chain doesn't try to pull you know from one side to another within this sprocket and it it, it may or it may not but uh, uh, let me set this stuff down here on the ground and so as I look at this chain you know it's it's leaning this leaning towards me a little bit like that right here uh, I don't even feel like it's screwed down. I'm sure it needs to be. So I'll have to address that. Yeah, this one's got this little piece has got two bolts in it, two two uh wood screws in it. So that's something I'll have to address. I, I don't think that should be floating like that, at least on that end. And uh, you guys that have these elevators, I'd be curious. You know how loose your chain is uh, on the on the bottom side you know how droopy is that chain uh, 
this feels it feels somewhat tight but there's there's a certain amount of of droop in it and uh, so let me uh, let me just kind of turn this wheel and see what happens that sprocket is definitely off the lip up there on the other end and so just kind of give it a turn here and I think that's gonna it's gonna work I mean the proof in the pudding is gonna be when I put when I put the uh, the belt on and hopefully the motor will fire up so I've got a belt uh, I might try to fit it on here loosely uh, let me see if I can find that belt one of the things is this chain this part of the chain needs to be vertically up and on the and I guess obviously so you can grab the bale and this tapered side is to the rear but uh, uh, I think we're coming along here a little bit uh, let me keep going up right here's the, the, the belt I got and uh, this is what seemed to cross uh, from the John Deere uh, website so let me lay it up on here of course it may not fit down through that gap but I will see what I can do here Ugh. That'd be great if I nicked that belt first time. Uh, let me set this camera down and I'll come back. All right, uh, so I got the belt uh, down over between here. It wasn't too bad, but uh, it's short. However, I've got an immense amount of slot right here to take advantage of. So who knows what kind of belt that was on it uh, before I ever uh, set eyes on this uh, elevator well i'm back on i'm back on the never-ending project this john deere uh, hay elevator <clears throat> and i'm trying to get the belt on and uh i need to move the motor back this way however i have a slight problem besides probably really rusty bolts uh this little contraption right here is bent to make a hook to kind of I guess tighten that motor down and uh, if you don't have a lock nut just bend the uh, the threaded rod all right so I got the belt on here and uh, I was able to straighten this thing out a little bit so I need to get that socket off there I'll do that here in just a minute but I straightened out that straightened out that uh, threaded rod a little bit. I tried to grab it back here so it wouldn't bugger up the threads too bad. And uh, gave it enough slack to get it on there. Still feels a little on the tight side. All right, I'm back out here at this elevator and uh, I was working on replacing this cord. And what I got here, call me crazy, but I had a short extension cord. Uh, three adapters on it and uh, it's 12 gauge wire and I just I just cut this thing off and uh, I didn't want to build a plug I wanted something I don't know if that's hermetically sealed but you know I'm uh, I'm thinking about uh, sparks and things like that I just I just want a, a, a when I'm in and around hay I want a cord that's you know factory buttoned up really good instead of some of my handiwork so uh, I don't know I probably got a foot or more a little over a foot of pigtail maybe not that much and uh, 12 gauge wire so that'll be good for a 15 amp circuit uh, maybe I think a lot of people run 20 amps on a 12 gauge wire no problem um, but uh, what I want to do is take this cap off and take this wire out and then wire that thing in. So 
Let's see what I can do. All right, so I got the cord wired in. It's probably the nicest looking thing on this whole elevator. But uh, I need to grease this thing up and then uh, put some power to it. All right, knock on wood, it's working. That old motor. Man, I gotta tighten the chain up a little bit, I think. Hopefully it won't bind. Like right there. You can see this thing's all still kind of crooked. So it's not perfect. I guess it'll work. Uh, this thing was a real job uh, putting together. And uh, I ran it and adjusted the tightness on the, on the chain. And the manual, I found the manual online, not for this elevator, but it says when you grab it at the center, if you can easily raise it five inches on a 24 foot elevator, uh, that's as tight as you want to get it. And that's about where I'm at. So So there it is running. Not exactly lined up straight uh, coming onto that wood block. And this one, it's almost as if the chain is pitched over that way a little bit, which is probably due to the way this thing was bent. Not much I can do about it. Probably need to put a piece of uh, round bar or something from here to there, just like it is over there. I'll do that another day, maybe. The engine runs, I don't know how long. You can see that fully. It's pretty wobbly. I've got some slack in there for it. And, uh... I boiled up that chain. I don't know what else to do. It's a model 33 uh, John Deere elevator. They didn't make it. 